We wanted to show you a most typical BMW 3 Series in this new generation, the G20, as the model code is. And here it is, the BMW 330i. Rear wheel drive, the base 2 liter 4 cylinder petrol engine, but with a little bit more horsepower. And not all the options you can pick. Of course, they leave the works here for the press vehicles always with a little bit more spec than usual. But not everything here in this car today. So, look forward to that. A German review with German Autobahn, also with a German built car. <laughs> At least the one you can get in Europe. Exterior, interior and the driving experience. Join me, Thomas, now in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the new generation, you can see here the new 3 Series has a wider front grille here with chrome frames around. The headlamps lead over to that, so that's you know a very fluent design, definitely. And this is here the Sportline model. You can also get an M Sport that would be even sportier in the design, but here already the Sportline has a you know, stronger lower bump and also different um, accentuations right here. The color for today is mineral gray and headlamps you have actually three options. You can go with standard LEDs then you would just have like a straight line as a daytime running light then these are here the optional LEDs dynamic lighting function in the German engineering speech it would be mit erweiterten Umfängen which like you know with extensive um, stuff <laughs> yeah hard to translate and you can see you have like an U-like signature then and optional optional you would get the laser lights and then then you have like this C daytime running light together with some blue accentuations for the high beam laser thing um, yeah I think these will also do just fine and the new efficiency thing you can see here when these double kidney fins are closed it's better wind efficiency and they are open then when more cooling is needed the length is at 4 meters 70, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches, which is a notable gain in length actually if you compare it to the predecessor. And from which side will I enter the stage today? Uh, today from the rear. Hello. So, wheels start from 16 inch, 17, 18 we have here. So 18 inch wheels for this very vehicle here. It also goes up to 19 inch then. Once again, it has here a rather classic sedan shape. You can see the design line, the main one, the main design line dividing in light and shadow above the door handles, and then the classic sedan shape here. G20, the model name here for the sedan. G21 would be the one for the touring. You can also see a review on this channel of the touring as well if you're interested in that. I think still a beautiful sedan, not too many changes here on the exterior. Hofmeister King design here in the side profile, reminding of at past BMW models and also this sport line here then with some dark accentuations and all in high gloss at the side. Suspension wise really interesting, there is a base suspension, a new one which is including hydraulic cushions. We have that here today. Option you can go for an M Sport suspension, which is the same base but just stiffer and a little bit lower. And then option you can also get an adaptive suspension, which has you know more variety span. We've been driving the M Sport and the adaptive suspension so far in the 3 Series. Today, first time with the base suspension. Let's see how that plays out. In the rear, biggest design change, new tail lumps here in a three-dimensional style and also a more modern signature right here i think that really suits the vehicle it um you know you immediately see oh that's the new three series especially then here from the rear and thank it's to the automotive god here no fake exhaust tips so the auto review fake exhaust police can stay at home today and binge watch some of the reviews for example so what do you think here of the rear design of the new three series give us your comments <laughs> Thank you.
2-liter four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine for the day in the 330i here, 258 horsepower, either with rear-wheel drive or optional X-drive all-wheel drive, but we prefer the rear-wheel drive here today. Yay! There's also a Wika 320i with 184 horsepower, and of course then you also have the 3-liter six-cylinder petrol engine available in the performance models and on the diesel side also 2-liter four-cylinder and 3-liter six-cylinder. And there's also the 330e, the plug-in hybrid petrol. We also have a review of that. start with the door closing sound. Hmm, heard better ones. And the inside of the doors, good quality materials, soft touch. Also sensor attack like the red being used here, Hofmeister King design, door handles, high class quality. Here some space also for some bottles. Six speakers, ten speakers or optional here, 16 speakers for the Harman Kardon top sound system. Really nice performance. Then you can see here the steering wheel in the M style right here because have the sport line digital instruments on the left zoom more to that seats here today with animal skin spec option but there are also animal free options sensor tech in the US for example you have in Europe fabric as base and also in this model here the sport line or also an M sport it would be fabric on the inside and sensor tech on the outside which would also be a suitable mix let's get inside and in this new 3 series you have a little bit more space in all of the seats actually steering wheel can be moved in and out up and down very easily nice and smooth process and it's a typical mid-size sedan seating position here with 1m86 or 6 foot button I still have some headroom left, substantially. You can also get a panoramic roof for this vehicle, which is now even wider in the size. We have a studio episode where we have shown that to you, for example. So, uh, of course, I have a little bit more comfort in the 5 Series. Yes, definitely. But here, mid-size sedan, a typical seating comfort also. So not too bad, but also not the, you know, most astonishing one. Electric seats here for today. Of course, they start manual, but you can also get electric ones. Here, the back part also up and down and the front part here can be lengthened then if you have a little bit longer legs like I. Interior overview, once again massive speaker output here from the 16 speakers Harman Kardon sound system. Option we have here is also the center tech dashboard, it's softer, also it's nicer in the structure and also with some stitching here. Then the screen here is very well integrated, also mirrors the lower design part right here. Climate unit is still manual, like to have it that way, easy to control it while driving. And also manual volume knob here with some nice metal knurling around, that's cool. Steering wheel, right side for volume control and also activating voice input if you don't use activation word. Left side for the cruise control and these rubber pads have been improved so it feels better now with a more hard surface here. Then the setup for the screen, it would start 8.8 .8 inch smaller one. Optional this here, the 10.25 inch screen. Left side either analog gauges with 5.7 in the middle or then 12.3 inch digital instruments like this. This unit together is the BMW Live Cockpit Professional. Then you have everything you, you know, yeah, you can get what they offer. And also with the OS 7, Operating System 7 by BMW, you can get over the air updates then, and also retrofit Android Auto, not only Apple CarPlay, which is then both working wireless. Zoom or deal through both screens. Here in the lower part, by the way, inductive charging pad for your phone. For the wireless function, it does make sense, and of course, although I don't like the pads because they heat up the phone so often and then sometimes they don't work anymore because they're overheated. So I prefer cable solutions usually, USB A charger in the front. So one solution could be to charge your phone with the cable and then don't have it in the inductive charging platform, uh, but just here or so. Hmm, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I mean the system with inductive charging does make sense somehow, 
but maybe there should be smartphone cooling or so. I don't know. Adaptive cup holders, then the shifting lever, automatic gearbox, 8-speed standard for the petrol engines, driving modes, we'll talk about that while driving. You don't have to use the screen just while touched, you can also use the turning and pressing knob and also some hotkeys, nice build quality as well with the knurling around. Then the Armrest here very well attached, you can fold up and reasonable space underneath and then there's USB-C charging. The digital instruments really come to life only when you start the engine. Here we go, also some nice visualization and why do the RPM go counterclockwise? Well, because then you have some space on the inside, for example, then for the GPS view. Overall, very nicely done. You don't have too many options, but you actually don't need them, it shows you everything you might need and it also adapts a little bit yeah sports mode more red and eco pro for example in more bluish atmosphere and a nice option is also the head-up display showing you speed allowed speed and also some gps directions now you see the map and we can also use the voice input hello bmw drive me to berlin all right our next destination is berlin so that works pretty well and also some other comments, uh, commands available, of course. The map in general is also, um, you know, very good as for the visualization using the hotkey here. You can also zoom in and out also with the lower control knob. And when he has calculated the route, then it's also quite responsive. Just while calculating the route, it's not responsive. Other than that, the CPU is also just fine. The rest of the main menu looks like this. Seems to is it adapted to the color. I think so, right? The mineral gray, um, very interesting, definitely. And you can have the settings right here, and for example, also set the interior lighting features. Of course, Thomas Blue all the way, and brightness all the way up. Yay! That's the way to go. And when you have the CarPlay or Android Auto mounted, it appears up there. And um, yeah, let's test the sound system here. Harman Kardon sound system, the optional one. And really gives a very very nice sound wow cool 3d sound of course 3d options all the way tuned up and the integration of the apple carplay goes all the way over the screen that's also again very well done and the rear view camera let's take a look at that great resolution and in top spec here you also have that not only a normal review but also the fake drone view from above the back mirror is also quite elegant not frameless but almost frameless and still the BMW wings light design here, really good to have them. The rear compartment is a nice change here in the new 3 Series generation and we also have soft touch at the inside of the door, again a very high build quality, this is one of the biggest changes going through the new generation and also since the wheelbase has been in length, you have also more legroom than before so you can easily sit here with four tall adults, five even, let's zoom find out about that about here i mean good seating position once again and also some headroom left isofix at the outside seats each you can fold up these head restraints by the way and otherwise you fold them down to have a better view from the front to the rear the middle seat here typical bmw rear tunnel rear tunnel here very massive and yeah it works but of course you sit a little bit higher and stiffer here so not that recommendable in the middle tunnel console here you have an additional AC unit if you like and also two USB-C chargers and this middle part you can put down and have some adaptive cup holders next to a ski hatch where you just fold the middle part right here. In a nice detail they also thought about the ambient lighting that is continued in the rear. The boot space has been increased to 480 liters because there's nothing to put up here, no cover. They just went lower with the boot and therefore has more luggage capacity. And we can also put a cabin trolley inside. You can see how that fits and easily also fits here in the vertical way. You see I already folded one. Uh, yeah, two thirds of the seat. It's also possible to unleash the other one like this and you can use your luggage to push it right through like this, for example, or go around, which would be the more elegant way, I think. <laughs> and the measures of this, or measurements of this boot is really good. So here, about a meter in width, a little bit less maybe, but then the normal length is also a meter. So when the seats are not, seats are not folded and the height here, this is 
little bit more than 50 centimeters and that's a very very good result and last but not least when we have the full length yeah full hd full screen full length of the trunk this is about 1 meters 80 to the seat as i am driving and what about child safety here when we just put a hand here and yeah that stops very well Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the BMW 3 Series G20, this new generation. Today with the 330i rear-wheel drive. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be, 3 Series rear-wheel drive, like that. And put it to a sports mode here, um, so we have a little bit more boost and also more throttle input. Camera position a little bit weird, but only that way you can read the speed here in the digital instruments, which is placed at the left side. We're starting at 30 kilometers an hour and accelerate it. I'll wait for the other car. Safety first, of course, always on Arctic fuel. So 30 kilometers an hour and let's go! Oh, that's 200 and I think reasonable acceleration also felt a nice push from the rear still also quite silent in here good noise insulation with the optional noise insulation package and car is suspension wise very stable on the road once again what I criticize here the low um, low angle you know low, sorry low oh so it up low degree steering feeling in the three series not the best one they have to work on that um, but here the car is so sovereign on the road so especially suspension wise here and the base suspension is really sporty enough no no other about that the steering is fun and feels a little bit artificial i think so and for bmw i think that's probably yeah once again my biggest criticism point here no matter in which driving situation you are it should be more natural in the feeling they can do it they have it in all of their other vehicles definitely oh well, there's the police see what they are I'm not sure what they're up to I think they're collecting something there I don't know yeah well but we did nothing wrong so we don't have anything to worry about <laughs> well now and here in a tunnel you can see how it looks like at night here also a little bit with the ambient lighting it's definitely also a very nice perspective we can always go back to the normal comfort mode for example and then the throttle input changes a little bit and also the shifting characteristics in the sport mode the gears are turned up higher and you also heard the sound and i think for a two liter four cylinder that sound we got here on the interior is actually quite nice you know nowadays almost all manufacturers work with sound actuators meanwhile i don't think it's a bad thing anymore because it's a good thing that the usual engine noise is very well insulated from the cabin that belongs to that also tires and rolling noise the wind noise are insulated and the catch is that we can hardly hear the engines anymore so we need to use the sound actuators then to you know if you want to have like this sporty feeling still and i have to say driving dynamic wise besides of the you know a little bit of the steam feeling once again very well done here in the new 3 series this car feels so much more refined you know, there was a time where BMW was struggling a little bit with the look and feel build quality on the interior. And this is definitely gone now also in this very segment. If we compare also the competitors, this one here is definitely among the top ones. So I think an Audi A4 and the BMW 3 Series is at the moment um, the best look and feel build quality on the interior. And of course, something of that is always, you know, a part of, of while, while driving the vehicle. And you can of course use the voice activation. Set temperature to 21 degrees. All right, I set the temperature in the driver's area on 21 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's good. For example, temperature input works well, but I mean, we do still have a manual AC unit here, so that's not really necessary. Most of the time I really use this then for the GPS input, for example, that you don't have to, you know, type in the uh, letters of the address and so on and so on however i think uh, that the activation works sometimes doesn't work too well so at the moment here the standard hello bmw is programmed in and sometimes you know it's like hello bmw and nothing happens so 
Um, I think maybe it's good then to put a personal activation word, which is maybe like a little bit different, so that might work better than in this case. So once again, we're going back on the motorway. You can see we don't need too much steering angle, that's actually good, but once again, you're a little bit loose than in this thing. It is, by the way, a little bit different here. In the sports mode, you have a little bit more resistance, but um, even not, you know, as much as I would probably like to have and you can see the eco pro mode where everything goes blue that again helps you with more efficient driving and you can also by the way set the cruise control here once again so you can see the distance to the car in front of us being kept even though when I, for example set the speed a little bit higher now speed being reduced anyway and once again the car is keeping me in lane also showing me here in the instruments that it's recognizing the car in front of us. Blind spot monitor, by the way, when we set the turning indicator at the same time, then it also flashes as an additional warning. That's always a good thing to have as well. One more acceleration when we are already at speed from 80 kilometers now to whatever. That's 180 you now, that should be enough for now. And here, very stable suspension wise in this high speed corner. Almost fixed Nürburgring Nordschleife like a little bit. Lane change at high speed, super stable once again. But yeah, the steering feeling, I won't be happy about that today. They really have to fix that. Sorry, I can't stress that enough. It, it wouldn't make me like, not necessarily like not buy the car because the car is still very good after all, definitely. But it would seriously annoy me, definitely. So, wow, really good suspension wise, evening out these waves and so on. So this new hydraulic cushion technology is working very well indeed. And yeah, this car really feels very good also at high speed. So typical German Autobahn car. <laughs> And now to some city driving here with the 330i BMW 3 Series in this new generation. And the most important thing to me here at the moment is actually the suspension because that's also new with this generation. Once again, the base suspension already with the hydraulic cushions, very interesting technology. And also then when you have, for example, the M Sport suspension, that is then way stiffer. We had that before. And found it too stiff for everyday driving and then there's the optional adaptive suspension which worked very well so the best comfort you will have with the adaptive suspension yes but of course not everyone wants to buy a 3 series fully packed with all the options and that's also why we try to find a 3 series today without the adaptive suspension to be able to test that and so far i think really does a good job so our you know recommendation was before either stick with base suspension or directly jump to the adaptive suspension and i think you can really stick with this recommendation so i feel the adaptive suspension is a little bit more forgiving um, and also gives you some more i mean that's a probably the, the, the biggest thing it gives you more variety you know because you can have it stiffer in sport and if you like but still can drive it in a comfortable way than in the comfort mode um, but here, the base suspension so far is fine. It has a sporty base layout as it's supposed to be for BMW 3 Series. So I think that's fine. Um, and I think the combination here with the 18 inch wheels is also still okay. I wouldn't go with bigger because that really, really reduces the comfort. If you want even more comfort with the base suspension and want to spend less money, then of course you would stick even with smaller wheels which are also available but 18 inch i think is still a nice compromise between already very nice visual sportiness but then also still a compromise here in the in the driving comfort and yeah i think um so far wasn't too distracted from potholes and so on steering wise here it is sporty and direct yes the only thing with the new 3 series um I would like a little bit more feeling here in the low angle, uh, you know, uh, or low, low degree regions. Mm, and I found that still one of the strangest things here, 
to me, the 3 Series should have the best steering in the model portfolio. But that's not the case. So, um, like, in a, like even in the BMW X1, the steering feeling is better. And I have no idea why, you know? So I also told the engineers that already. So I really hope that they maybe find a solution then for the face lift of the 3 Series or, or something like this. We're talking, you know, really no high niveau high level here so it's still good you know and it, it's fun to steer the car around but i expect a little bit more low degree feeling from a bmw 3 series from a car that stands for the brand itself you know as soon as you leave these very you know like like this region here then it's actually totally fine so hmm yeah, I don't know, but nowadays that's mostly software, so I think this can also be finely tuned. That should not be a problem to fix that. But still, it's fun to ease this car around, and also the suspension keeps it really upright. Bear in mind, a BMW most of the time has a sporty layout, even though it's a base model. But I think they nowadays very well master the compromise between sportiness and comfort. Besides, when you go for the fixed M Sport suspensions, had it in the 3 Series, had it also in the BMW X2, for example, they are so stiff that you, you really have, I mean, some maybe like want to have this extreme feedback, but for most driving situations, I think it's unsuitable to lose this kind of comfort then. So, going downhill now, and we're in the comfort mode we can also go to the eco pro mode that is then reducing the throttle input also stresses again the potential sailing or coasting effect um, so the that the rpms actually drop to zero and the car is just like freely running so that's definitely a good thing and even more improve improves the fuel economy and the fuel economy actually with this new generation also has been improved and is surprisingly good. So once again, here we are at 6.4 liters or more kilometers and indeed also, you know, been testing this car for a longer period of time. So you can easily score really between something between six and seven liters on one kilometers. And that is 35 to 40 MPG US and very, very well in the 40s mpg uk regions um like even close to like 47 48 if you like of course if you speed it up a little bit more on the motorway who did that can't remember then of course you can also come closer like to eight liters or more kilometers or then closer to the 30 mpg us or lower 40 mpg uk so of course of course always depends on the throttle input but indeed this two liter four cylinder can be driven in a very efficient way and it's really astonishing that also with the um, bigger BMW engines, the 3 liter 6 cylinders, I mean, if you think about what the brand of BMW stands for, you know, like, you know, sportiness, driving fun, German engineering, although almost all of the SUVs are being built in the US now, <laughs> um, you, you know, you get the picture. But would you say like, oh, they seem to score very good consumption figures? And recently I was surprised that you know, when you, we also compare the other premium manufacturers, for example, or also the other non-premium manufacturers, that most of the BMW engines we've been testing, besides the LCA cylinders, so all the four and four and six cylinders, they were, you know, very, very efficient. So um, that's definitely a, a very good finding. This car, by the way, is equipped with the optional insulation package. So um, yeah, it's a couple of hundred euros extra. The car is more sun than the previous generation from the get-go, yes, but with this additional insulation, insulation package, it's even better. So I um, can really recommend that and it's a good and silent ride. This feeling gives you, you know, it's really a feeling of serenity, really cool, really calm and collected. Um, I really like that. Yeah, Thomas, which is, uh, sorry. The adaptive suspension yes i mean yeah, the base suspension is not bad at all it's good yes but if i would have the choice i would still i think i go for the adaptive suspension maybe save the sunny uh, the, save the money somewhere else yeah sunny money okay now 60 to 80 from the normal comfort mode Plop, that's it that, oh that was already 90. no one saw that 
that reduces the speed immediately. Yeah, <laughs> I can uh, keep track of the speed in the head-up display, so no problem as for that. Now it's time to test the assistance systems. So here we can activate it at the steering wheel. This car is also equipped with the optional driver's assistance package and I mean the base functions like an autonomous emergency brake this is a standard for the 3 series it's not for the 5 series why what the hell but at least for this one but then this driver assistance package is um, really good um, you know there's the blind spot monitor and then there's this adaptive screw control which also has the active lane keeping assist and now always a good test this construction side lane here some cars fail to do so and we have to wait for the normal wide lines in this case in this country for the you know normal situations but here yeah uh, the car was decelerating here also because it was um, reading the the you know uh, the reduced speed traffic sign wise from the other side of the lane that also happens but here now see here the system should not you know you should not take your hands off the steering wheel there it is you know it was even map data in, in advance here look at that really really interesting so that's why at the moment the car's thinking we're at 60 kilometers an hour in the allowed speed but here doing a phenomenal job and also very smooth reactions it's not overreacting here with keeping me in the lane so assistance systems wise very well done here also with the new generation and by the way talked about the sensor tech dashboard here um, this is also a nice option definitely not too cost intensive and it adds some more premium feeling here definitely to the car and there are some things i i just enjoy while driving you know also like the power dome situations on the hood so often i take a look at these while driving um, when cars have them just think like nice design <laughs> yeah that's probably what you do in an SL car and through this and that's why also you are really right here at this very channel we do have a good overview by the way the rear mirror has a small frame have a good view to the rear although it's a classic sedan um, the B pillar does block your view a little bit therefore the blind spot monitor is really a must-have yeah this Jaguar SUV behind us probably want to overtake us here for the blind spot monitor there it is yeah it's the e-pace very funny fact, by the way, that the E-Pace is one of the most reliable Jaguars on the market. It's a Jaguar that's built in Austria by Magna. Yeah, it's just a fact. It's really, really the case. So then let's put it to 100 kilometers an hour, which is like standard motorway speed also. Yeah, some of course, a little bit faster in Germany. But here, once again, very calm and collected, this whole car. Um, you know the BMW six cylinders are very good engines and they're very calm and collected on the road. But here indeed with the you know evolutionized two liter four cylinder engine, it doesn't make you miss the additional cylinders too much. It's a really good engine, you know, it, it feels very sovereign as well, although you know but I mean it has sufficient power with, with these 258 horsepower. So yeah, once again I think driving wise definitely one of the best cars in the segment and now to the conclusion for today with the bmw 330i this new 3 series generation from the exterior i think most you know bigger stands on the road sporty design interesting also with the different daytime running lights here depending on the led trim you have and you also have some nice colors available a classic sedan style and especially from the tail lamps it has you know more modern shape than before interior build quality a massive step forward in this new generation definitely nice design also again the great build quality and also the functionality the user interface is very good simple and straightforward and also the voice input is actually at a very good stage meanwhile we know with the Polestar 2 there's even better of course this one considering also some other competitors actually at a very good stage also more space in the interior than before especially more legroom in the rear that's again another step forward you do also get some sustainable seats on the interior you can pick them even if we didn't have them here today driving wise 
very sovereign on the road, good performance from the engine, both power-wise and also fuel economy-wise, as we told you earlier. So very good in the fuel economy, uh, actually, so this has also been improved. In general, it's one of the best cars in the segment, yes. The only thing, yeah, from that steering feel, I'm not sure why they really messed up that in this low degree, um, yeah, region. I'm not sure about that. They have to fix it with the facelift. That's probably the biggest flaw with this car at the moment. Everything else, I have to say, really convincing. And it's totally fine to pick one of the base 3 Series with a smaller engine and not with all the equipment included. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I hope to see you next time.